Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Edelman. I'll be your professor for EDP 3273, Child Development, and I just wanted to take a few moments to introduce myself and also explain key areas on the syllabus that I want to make sure that you guys read and that you understand before we start the course. So welcome. I'm really excited to have you. Uh, this is the first time I'm teaching this course, however, I've taught courses like this in other universities. Um, not online, but I teach online uh, very frequently, so I know ways to get you guys to be successful and also to kind of open these lines of communication and make sure that we have a good connection between professor and student. So first and foremost, I want to make sure that you all know how to use Blackboard. Blackboard is the platform we're going to be using for this course. So I wanted to make sure that you know how to access your messages. This is how I'm going to be communicating with you, your Blackboard messages. So make sure that you can access those. Make sure that you can access your announcements because every week I'm going to be posting um, helpful tips for your weekly assignments and quizzes. I'm going to also post links to explanation videos, so a video like this of how to do each assignment, what I'm expecting, so you understand because sometimes written instructions can be a little confusing and you might interpret them a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do is in all of my videos, I'll give you examples of what I'm looking for. They might not be examples of the actual assignment because then you guys are probably going to give me that same example and sometimes I want you to use your creative minds to think of different ways to um, to present your information. But I will definitely give you very clear examples and directions of how to be successful in all of your assignments. So make sure that you can access all of these um, areas on Blackboard, the announcements section, the messages. Make sure that you can post to the discussion boards. You're going to have to do that and post uh, responses to your peers as well. All right, so once you know that you can use Blackboard, and then there's a practice quiz so you know that your computer is, is compatible with Blackboard and that you have everything that you'll need. Um, you're going to need a video. You're going to need to be able to video. You're going to need to be able to have a microphone. So if there's any issues, we can talk about different ways of getting around that. All right, your next step, you are going to order the text. So the text is Child Development and Education. It's uh, McDevitt and Ormond. Ormrod, excuse me, and it's a Pearson 5th edition 2010. The ISBN is 01324862202, and you're going to find that all in your syllabus. Everything that you need to know is going to be in your syllabus. All right, so this course is essentially going to be going over and explaining and discussing and, and helping you understand child development from birth to age eight. So birth through age eight, that is the early child development years, early childhood. So when we say early childhood education, we are referring to the ages of birth through age eight, which is roughly mid third grade. That's still early childhood. Um, so I wanted to just quickly go over the objectives for this course. The first objective is you're going to be able to compare and contrast major theories of child development. And I know when you hear the word theory, you might kind of glaze over a little bit, but I'll make sure that you understand uh, why these theories are relevant and it's not just something dry that I want you to learn. This, these theories are essentially what early childhood uh, development, education, approaches, strategies are all based on. So you'll know, you'll probably have heard these names before and you'll know how to make it more relevant and meaningful to you and your career. Next, I'm going to ask you all to describe the application of child development to early education. You know, we're going to do that through all of our weekly assignments and quizzes, so I'm not going to just kind of give you that broad uh, objective and make you write a paper on it because that really, you're not going to learn from that. You're going to learn from more uh, application-based assignments, so that's what you should expect. You're going to explain the essential role of family, culture, and community in the development of young children. So it's not just the teacher, it's not just the family, but it's everybody uh, that is interacting with the student. It's the environment. So you'll, you'll learn more about that. You're going to categorize the multiple domains of child development and discuss how they intersect. So you'll learn all about the domains of development and, uh, and how they uh, overlap and how they work together. You're going to evaluate the typical and atypical development of young children across multiple domains. 
You are going to reflect on the development of culturally, linguistically, and ability diverse young children. So you'll see that a lot of my background is in culturally responsive instruction and, and working with kids and students and young children who are from a diverse background and diversity is, is there's multiple facets to it. So my background's in special education, in early childhood special education. So I've always worked with kids that have diverse ability levels, but they also come from very diverse backgrounds, um, culturally diverse, linguistically diverse. Uh, I'm, I live in Miami. I teach in Miami. So I've, I've always had students from multiple uh, linguistic diverse backgrounds. And also, you know, uh, the SES diversity, you know, they're, they're from very low income to more high income, and I've taught uh, the gamut throughout. So you'll see that I definitely highlight areas of diversity because wherever you're teaching, you are going to encounter this. So it's, it's best to learn how to do it now when you're not actually working with kids and make your mistakes now and learn from them instead of uh, impacting the, the kids' lives. You are going to evaluate individual differences of the trajectory of development in young children. You're going to generate ideas by which to enhance the developmental outcomes of all young children across multiple developmental domains. And you will explain how biological, cognitive, and social factors influence early education and the development of all young children. And I know it seems a lot. It seems like a very broad amount of information, but I will help you get through it and you'll definitely get through it. You will be successful in this course. A little bit about me. Um, so all of my background is in early childhood special education. I've been in the early childhood special ed field for about 13 years now. Um, I have taught in Miami-Dade public county schools. I have uh, taught early childhood special ed, and that was pre-kindergarten kids with disabilities. Um, for several years and before that I taught high school kids with disabilities and before that I worked for the Mailman Center for Child Development as a language stimulation therapist. So I've always worked with kids with diverse abilities and uh, in the area of, of child development. That's always been a, a, a very large theme for me. And then I got my master's at University of Miami in early childhood special ed. Uh, taught for a few more years and went back and got my doctorate in special education with a concentration in early childhood. So now I'm here. I've been working at FIU for about two years. Um, I work face-to-face -face and online. I, I definitely um, prefer the face-to-face -face interactions with students, which is why I do these videos, because I want you to be able to see me explain things. So it's easier to have that connection, because I know that uh, online courses can have a, a very large disconnect, and I would like to bring us together a little bit more. So you'll see that every week I'm going to be posting videos where I'm explaining all the concepts that you need to know. Not a lecture type, because lectures are not effective, um, but more, what do you need to know right now to be successful this week? So that's what I'm going to help you do. Uh, you are going to have a mixture of quizzes, exams, assignments, and a final project, which is a group project, and I know there are very uh, diverse opinions about group projects, but in the field, in the profession, you're going to be working with people that you are not similar to, so it's best to learn how to do it uh, skillfully now, um, as opposed to when your job depends on it. So, And I will also have a, an Adobe Connect meeting, and the date is um, January 17th. Let me scroll down to it. Hold on, bear with me here. January 17th at 1 p.m. I'll send you a link, direct link of how to get to me. Adobe Connect is an, a platform where you're able to interact. We can have a chat session. Some of you can turn on your, your uh, videos if you would like. So that's how we are going to um, meet. And that's going to be kind of like a brown bag session where I unpack anything that you might not understand, any kind of questions that you have about the syllabus. <coughs> Um, we are going to have chapter activities. They're going to be due, you know, between two or three weeks. And uh, I will definitely let you know when everything is due. Everything will be due on Sunday by 11.59. That's the due date for me. Um, so you have the weekend to complete your activities during the week also. And um, I just wanted to make sure that that is very clear. Now, um, I do not accept late work without any kind of medical uh, proof that you have some kind of 
medical issue. So please do contact me. If you're having some trouble <clears throat> with any of your work, contact me before uh, as opposed to after the due date where I really can't help you, but before I can definitely support you, work you through it. Um, I'm here as a support system, so certainly do contact me. I'm, I'm very open to helping students. I'm easy to reach, so be sure that you do contact me in the event of some kind of issue. <coughs> you will have three exams, February 14th, March 28th, and April 20th. And they cover several of the chapters, so that is all on the syllabus. All of the assignments are listed, all of the due dates are listed, everything is, is very clearly laid out. And you're going to contact me through Blackboard message, so make sure that you can do that. In cases of emergency where I'm not able to be uh, reached through Blackboard, you can contact me via my email address. You can try calling me at my office, however I'm not often in my office, I do work from home a lot. Um, so I won't be giving out my cell phone number, but you can contact me and leave a message at my office phone and I get it through email. Uh, they try to roughly translate what you said. It ends up not being at all correct, but I still will get your name and your number and I'll be able to call you back. Lastly, um, so I would consider myself a pretty laid back professor. Uh, I do hold you to certain standards. Some of my grading can be a little tough at times, but I'll tell you the objectives that I'm looking for and exactly what you're supposed to be giving to me. If you put forth a good deal of effort and you are able to demonstrate that your knowledge is growing from this course, then you're doing exactly what I want. I want you to be able to demonstrate that you are growing as a professional. Um, that being said, if I'm expecting a few paragraphs and I get a few sentences, you won't get credit for that. Um, you know, I, I know that we are all busy here, but you're going to need to set aside some time so you're able to be successful in this course. And then finally, I have zero tolerance for any kind of plagiarism or cheating. Um, I am, you know, not that removed from when I was a student. I know all of the tricks. I know what to look for. I've caught people before. Um, I'm very unforgiving when it comes to plagiarism. Um, if I do suspect it, I will call a meeting right away and we'll discuss future actions. Um, but please do not make me put me in that position where I have to do this. You know, we're all professionals. We're all adults here. And you're really cheating yourself if you're not able to grow. And especially in this course, you need child development in any area of early childhood. So make sure that you are doing your own work. Um, I do get used to what the type of work that people hand in, the type of writing that they're are that they're accustomed to. So if I see certain writing and then I see something else for a final or I see something else for a paper, um, I'm going to have concerns. So don't plagiarize. Um, I will catch you. I don't want to have to do this in this class. You know, I'm, 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 it's a clean slate. Everybody's coming as, uh, as an A student and you just need to keep up that A and make sure that you're working towards that A so you're, you're demonstrating that you have actually grown from this. Um, cheating, same thing. You know, in certain assignments, you're able to work together. Those are called group assignments. Every other assignment is going to be individual. If you have the same answers as somebody else, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take that as some kind of coincidence. I'm going to think that that is a cheating instance. Um, that being said, if you are taking words directly from the text or directly from external uh, sources, that is also plagiarism. So make sure that you cite everything. If you need to do a direct quote, use quotation marks um, and then cite the, the source and the page number and the year that it was published so I can see that you're giving um, credit to whoever whoever it was the one that, that actually wrote those words. Um, there's not many instances that you need to have direct quotes unless they're using a term that you cannot put in your own words. Paraphrasing is totally fine. You can take the information, you think about it, you you put it on paper in your own words. Um, so essentially you're taking the concepts that you found somewhere else, but you're internalizing them and you're talking about them in your own words. That's what I need you to do. If you um, have assignments that are mostly direct quotes, I'm not going to give you credit for it because that's somebody else's word. I need direct quotes and explanations in your own words as well. I can't have any more than 30% direct quotes in assignments because it's not it's not you that's that's giving me the answer, it's somebody else, even if you do cite. So make sure to use those um, sparingly. All right, that being said, thank you for watching the introductory syllabus video. Um, I want to make sure that you take your syllabus quiz. So read the syllabus or have it open and complete the quiz because then you'll have access 
to all of the course content. So read the syllabus, take the quiz, order your texts, and I'm looking forward to a great semester.